Hi, Adam Bazalgette here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today's subject, one tip that virtually eliminates fat chip shots forever. I believe there is one that at least comes close to that. I'm gonna share some things with you about how to avoid hitting it fat, plus that tip, plus at the end, and this isn't gonna be a super long video, at the end I'm gonna give you some practice tips if you're struggling with your chipping that I know will help you if you'll hang in there and watch the end of the video. But briefly, if you haven't subscribed to Scratch Golf Academy, we'd love it if you did. That helps us build momentum here. Love to bring you more free videos. Just hit the bell there also, you'll be notified every time a brand new video is coming your way. All right, not a bad little pitching wedge shot. Okay, so what is this one tip that I think will really eliminate the fast shots? Here it is, don't hit fat shots. Now, hang in there for just a second. What I mean is, if you're battling a two-way miss in golf, could be off the tee if you're hitting it both right and left. Every time, you, every time you fight one, you get the other. You have to eliminate one and battle the other. So with this shot, what we're going to look at before we do those practice habits, I think will be really helpful to you, how to get rid of the fat shot at least how to minimize it. I mean, you're a human being once in a while, but we're talking about shots that dig in the ground, that you duff, you stub, not shots where you maybe just graze the ground a little bit too far behind the ball. Those aren't really that bad. So here's a couple of first thoughts. Number one, your swing needs a very low level spot at the bottom. It has to have a good six, eight, 10 inches where it's nearly at ground level. If you're struggling with that, make some practice swings. Let's put the club on the ground and make some forward practice swings moving your body. Feel that lowness. Caution though, as you do that, don't drag the handle and separate your arms from your body. That won't help you. This thing's fairly subtle. I mean, brush your sleeve once if you had to get something off it. If it's a little stickier than you thought and you have to add a little bit more pressure, that's how subtle this thing is. It's not that difficult, but you've got to hang in there with it a little bit. So, got the nice low level spot got the nice flow, I'm not gapping my arms away from me. In fact, I like to feel my arms are a little softer and more up against me. Very important, your lead side has to be pretty low, fairly level here. If you get your center well behind the ball and get this look at a dress where you're just pushing your hands forward, you're in trouble when you do this. So let's have a go. Forward with my center so I feel I'm at least up to the ball. A couple of rehearsal strokes, get my feel. That looks like it would work. I even hit a little bit behind that, but because there's no dig there, the shot's just fine. Okay, let's look at these practice habits. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Okay, let's talk about practice. If you've lost confidence, if you've stubbed a few and thinned a few, which is inevitably the reaction to stubbing or chunking them a little bit, duffing them as I like to call it, you're gonna have some mental scar tissue a little bit there. Here's how I would recommend practicing. Be very general with your target. I was roughly aiming at that flag over there and just work on contact a little bit. As I say, is a subtle difference. Picture what you can do with your hand on your sleeve. You can regulate angle of attack or regulate pressure pretty effectively. Line up three golf balls or four or five if you like with a little gap in between them. Here's the key, you've got to get more good reps so your mind starts to develop feel, more good reps than bad reps. So that means mostly practice swings and don't take a lot of time between them. This assumes you've set your setup, got a good feel for it. Just strike them off till you feel like, you know what, that is just almost automatic. Then go in and hit the shot and don't take much time over the ball. One other big tip here, so here we go. So let's say I've made some good practice swings, made good contact with that. I'll watch it out briefly. I'll go right to the next few practice swings and hit one. But let's say I do this. Let's say I make my practice swings perfect, 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 and I come in, thin the ball like that. Don't give it energy. Don't sit and think about it. What did I do wrong? All it is is interference. Your mind's not confident. Go straight back to making practice swings. Bang, 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 over to the ball and again. And if I've seen this happen with people, I've seen it happen with me on occasion, where you have 30 good practice strokes over the course of four balls and hit all four balls badly. That can happen. Keep on the horse. Keep making the practice swings. Your mind will start to relax if you're getting those good reps. You'll start to break through and hit some solid shots. You'll build that confidence you need. I know this will help you if you put these thoughts into practice. Well, I hope that helps you. As I say, you gotta practice these things a little bit and earn them a bit, but this isn't too difficult. You can do it, become a good chipper. Hope this helps.